Why, hello there. It's been probably 20 minutes since you last heard my voice. But we are here for the season premiere of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show with your host, Taryn Rodriguez. Oh, hey, that's me. We have ourselves a jam-packed show today. We'll be talking NBA, Lakers, Clippers, the purple and gold, the team that's trying to get out of the shadow of the Lakers. Which one of these two teams will win the NBA championship? We'll also talk baseball. Los Angeles Dodgers. Can they actually get out of their little curse streak? And will the Angels, we'll talk, we'll talk about them too. Will the Angels finally get back into the postseason? We'll also be talking about hockey, the Anaheim Ducks, and the Los Angeles Kings. What happened to those two teams? And what can they do to possibly get back to the postseason? We'll also be talking about the NFL, Rams Chargers. What do those two teams need to do in order to get back to the postseason and to possibly get a Super Bowl for the City of Angels? Also, we'll be talking a little MLS action. The LA Galaxy, LAFC, which of those two teams will we be seeing in the championship and which team will be falling flat on their face? Also, we have a little college. I will be talking college. It's not just going to be USC. It's not just going to be UCLA. It's going to be Cal Baptist. Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long U- University of San Diego, San Diego State, Pepperdine, even Loyola Marymount University. All that here on the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. Once again, this is Taryn Rodriguez bringing you the first and certainly not the last episode of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And once again, I'd like to welcome you all to the first of what is many episodes of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show with yours truly, Taryn Rodriguez. And it's great to be having a change of pace in terms of shows. I know I just had a quick turnaround in terms of shows such as Set Point all the way over to here, but it feels really good to actually have a new show in terms of like pro sports not that i haven't talked a a whole lot about pro sports on set point but i'm just it's going to be a great change of pace to be talking more pro sports in a certain region such as southern california without any further delay let's get ill with that pill starting off with the nba lakers clippers We all know the Lakers have clinched their spot in the playoffs. So good for the Lakers. They're back in the postseason. It's been a while since we've seen the Lakers in the postseason. And quite frankly, they kind of needed to be back in the postseason, especially with the level of talent they have with Anthony Davis, with LeBron James, Kyle Kuzma, and then resurging talent such as Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, Rayshon Rondo, all that. So... Definitely good to see the Lakers back in the postseason when the whole NBA season was canceled. Unfortunately, their last uh, game that they played was a loss to the Brooklyn Nets, which kind of surprised me. They lost by two points, and Anthony Davis had a three-pointer, which looked like it was going to be good, but unfortunately it rattled out. So, And we already have someone in the chat room. It is none other than Ben Sutter at the third, a.k.a. BS3 Radio. It is great to have you in the chat room. And we also have another person in the chat room, Pierre Moss, repping the OC, repping Orange County. Appreciate you two dropping by. Big shout to Ben Sutterith and BS3 Radio. And big shout to Pierre Moss and Wellington Sports Radio. Great to have you both in the chat room today. So anyway, back to the Lakers. The Lakers definitely have been great as of this year. They've definitely not been short of of anything of greatness. And Matt Hames says... Oh, Matt Hames uh, also pops in the chat room and says, Hey, Taryn, good luck on your new show. Hey, thank you very much, Matt. Definitely appreciate 
Definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate all the love and support that you've given IE Sports Radio. And hopefully, uh, and good luck with you too as well. And hopefully, uh, I don't have to hear you uh, bashing my Chargers when the Steelers lose, when the Steelers beat them again, beat the Chargers again. <laughs> but uh, that's besides the point. That I'll be talking about the Chargers a little later. But for right now, we got ourselves the Lakers. Lakers have been have been definitely be, been great this year. They've had their ups and downs especially with the uh, passing of Kobe Bryant, which was definitely tragic. But that's kind of got to be their motivator. Their motivator has to be they got to win it for Kobe. They got to do this for the city of Los Angeles. They haven't had a championship since 2010, obviously. And a lot of teams are now coming back for them. You know, They're coming for them, and that target on their back keeps getting bigger and bigger. And it's it just gets tougher from here. If you've seen the Lakers' schedule – it's definitely a tough it's definitely no shortage of uh of anything tough. Their first game is against the Los Angeles Clippers. And these these games are all going to be uh played in Los a- in, not in Los Angeles, Orlando, Florida in basically a bubble where there's going to be no home court advantage, no fans, none of that. It's just going to be played in like a and like a dome and their first game is against the Los Angeles Clippers which I'll be talking about. That's going to be most of their show their games are going to be on national television. So if the Lakers like primetime TV, they're going to have to play like they're on primetime TV because most of their games are definitely not anything to sneeze at. First and foremost, they've got the Clippers, which have beaten the Lakers two times out of three. So they've got that to contend with. Then their second game is against the reigning NBA champion, the Toronto Raptors, which have definitely been a great surprise team despite losing Kawhi Leonard to the Clippers. Then we also then the third game for the Lakers is the against the Utah Jazz. The Jazz have, are definitely trying to claw their way into the playoffs. They're definitely have the potential and they have the talent as well. In their fourth game, they have the Oklahoma City Thunder, definitely uh, always a contender in the West. Oh, we have ourselves another guest, and it, this one also comes from BS3 Radio. It's Courtney Harden, the host of The Real Deal on BS3 Radio. He says, t Raw debut episode show. Congrats. Hey, thank you very much, Courtney. Definitely do check out The Real Deal with Courtney Harden every Saturday. I believe that airs at like noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time, something like that, something along those lines. He definitely does a great job. He has many guests on his show as well. He definitely does great in the podcasting world, and I'm glad you're turning tuning into uh, this show as well. And hopefully I'm doing uh, well in terms of sound because I'm using a headset mic, and I didn't really get any complaints uh prior so hopefully everything is going on good in the hood so anyway back to the Lakers schedule they have the Oklahoma City Thunder after they face the Utah Jazz that's another good game I can see the Thunder trying to claw their trying to also squeak their way in they definitely can do so with a with a few of their talent I wouldn't call them potential champions I wouldn't pick them to win the NBA championship, especially with the talent that they have to contend with uh, going forward. And Courtney says, appreciate your support as always. I appreciate your support as well. You know, we got to do what we got. Us podcasters have to do what we got to do. And Ben says, Lakers versus Clippers will be great out, out of the blocks. And he says, sound is good. Hey, thanks, Ben. Definitely appreciate you checking on me. And uh, I definitely agree. Lakers, Clippers, that's already something good out the gate on national television. So definitely a match to – a game to watch for on TNT. So that's a great way to, like, uh, get the uh, season going. Then the Lakers have the Houston Rockets on August 6th. Uh, I definitely see the the Rockets kind of being a contender I, I would I, I'd call them a dark horse. Offensively, they're good, but they just lack height. Like it's kind of like a high school team. So, no offense to like high school teams, but they don't, I don't think they have any like players above seven feet. So it's just basically going to be uh like give and go basketball or just they're going to be making a whole lot of threes. They're going to be shooting a whole lot of threes with uh, James Harden and Russell Westbrook. I believe one of their players, uh, Tabo, 
I think it was Tabo Cephalosha, not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, won't be uh, traveling with the Rockets, so that's kind of going to hinder the Rockets a little, but th- to me, I think the Rockets can do damage, but it's just they lack height. Like, if the Lakers and Rockets played against one another, it would basically just be Anthony Davis going into the post and just going in for like an easy hook shot. That's just kind of that's just how much height the Rockets are giving up, unfortunately. So but to each his own. Um I just also gotta get the disclaimer out of the way. These are the opinions of Taryn Rodriguez and not of IE Sports Radio. And then the Lakers so anyway, back to uh the Lakers schedule. They also have the Lakers also play the Pacers as well. The Pacers are also a solid team in the East. They're not the Oh, uh, Ben Sutter says Rockets are not going far. Yeah, I kind of agree. I was kind of a little high on the Rockets, but uh, I don't really trust no D Dan Tony. In other words, the the Rockets defense is complete Terry Blay. And Courtney Harden says the Rockets are the wild card, but can't trust Dan Tony, Harden, and Westbrook. Yeah, I agree. It's the West is going to be decided by the Lakers and the Clippers, maybe the Nuggets if they start to get hot, but. Honestly, it's going to be down to the Lakers Clippers. As for the Lakers next game, it's going to be uh, August 8th, and it'll be against the Pacers. That's also another TNT game. <laughs> like, again, you're going to be seeing the Lakers on national TV a lot. And then you have their next game is against the Denver Nuggets. After that, when they play the Pacers, they. Or, after their game against the Pacers, they play the Denver Nuggets. That again, that's a great team. Another great team in the West. I think that's the uh, that is the third best team in the West behind the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Ben definitely agrees with me saying D'Antoni, aka No D, aka No D. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have the Kawhi Leonard uh, sound effects slap. Otherwise, I'd be implementing that in there. So anyway, as for the Denver Nuggets, that's. Definitely going to be a great game. I definitely can see the Nuggets giving the Lakers a bit of a battle. All of the Lakers games are going to be battles, just an FYI. And even their last game being against the Sacramento Kings, that's which is to be determined. That's going to be on August 13th. I, if, if everything goes right for the Kings and the Lakers lock up the number one seed... You could see the Lakers resting on the majority of their starters, and you could see the Kings just straight up going guns a-blazing, trying to get that last spot in the playoffs. Because the Kings have long been yearning for a chance to get into the playoffs, and they've been long yearning for an NBA championship. So they're definitely going to want to bring their best, their best shot against the Los Angeles Lakers, especially in the final game of the season. So I expect the Kings to... Uh, basically just go all out and honestly the kings can make the playoffs but it's just doubtful like it's pretty doubtful for the most part but anything can happen in this shortened season cuz now the season is pretty much reaching its climax again we we know the lakers are a lock for the playoffs it's not a matter of when it's a matter of where the lakers are going to be if that really makes sense. I I don't know. Like, the Lakers could finish as the top seed, or they could finish somewhere in the middle. Heaven forbid. But I could see the Lakers pretty much trying to clinch that top seed in the Western Conference. They definitely do appear to be the favorite, but you also got to watch out for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks are definitely having a great season. The Raptors, like I said, are having a great surprise season despite all of their roster, despite most of their roster turnover. Um, Nick Nurse has done a great job over there at Raptor Land. Um, the Celtics can be a dark horse team in the East. The Miami Heat is the well, and I say that because they've pretty much locked up a playoff spot. The Heat are pretty good as well. The Clippers, like I said, are the Clippers, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. Might as well just transition to them. So the Clippers. They're just they're pretty much on their way of clinching a playoff spot. They're pretty much knock on the door and they want to be let in. And this is probably their year to win the uh, NBA championship. If if they pretty much come up big in the playoffs. 
obviously we've seen it year after year. The Clippers find some way to just belly flop their way out of the out of a championship. They've had pretty great they've had some pretty solid teams in the in the past, but they've just haven't had the the proper they just haven't come up big in the playoffs. Like I remember they blew a three one lead to the Rockets and I think they had like a twenty point lead at one point in game six and then they found a way to just lose it. And it's like really? You really lost that? You lost a two a three one lead and you lost while you were up like twenty in game six? That's embarrassing, man. So Clippers are trying to get out of the Lakers' shadow, and I, and here's the thing: it's not that I don't like the Clippers. I am a Laker fan, obviously, just as a disclaimer. But I don't necessarily hate the Clippers. I like Kawhi, I because of his uh, story. I like Lou Williams and his passion for the game. I like Paul George. Doc Rivers is a great coach. It's just that all of these random Clipper fans coming out of the woodwork. Where did you? Where were you when the when the Clippers were kind of average, were were just nowhere near, nowhere to be found, and they were the butt of everyone's jokes? I'm not trying to take a shot at Clippers Nation. Like I like like Clippers. The Clippers actually have fans. One of their fans in general is Clipper Daryl, who's a really nice guy. I've met. I actually saw him at a Clippers Lakers game. Really chill guy, and he just wants what's best for his team. And it's not easy to cheer for a team that's always it's not had success. It's it's definitely easy to to cheer for a team that's been successful. But what about the years where you've just been unsuccessful? Like if you're a fan who's definitely cheered for a team that's gone through its lowest of lows, but now is reaching their peaks and their highs at the moment, then take a bow. I'll give you a light applause. But yeah, yeah, definitely got to give you, give the diehard fans an applause. Um, For the Clippers, however, again, it's not that I don't like the Clippers. I mean, I respect them. It's just that the random fans that are coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, I've been a Clippers fan for such and such year. It's like, when was the last time the clip? Were you there when the Clippers were like back in San Diego? It's like, sometimes it just gets me thinking, are, are they really Clippers fans or are they Lakers haters? That's just my thing. Like Clipper Daryl is definitely a diehard Clipper fan, but all these other Clipper fans that are just randomly saying, "Oh, I don't like the Lakers. I've always, never liked the Lakers. I love the Clippers." I need a receipt for all the years you've been cheering for the Clippers. I just need a receipt. If you don't have a receipt, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but but as for the Clippers themselves, uh, like I said, they open up their uh, relaunch season against the Lakers on July 30th. And then after the game against the, the Lakers, they face the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. The Pelicans are an interesting team. They're trying to claw their way into the playoffs with Zion Williamson. And especially... With when they have like former Lakers players such as Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and and just to name a few as well. So, so I definitely that's another eye-opening matchup. I don't. I could see the Clippers winning that match, but eh, who knows? Pelicans are definitely gonna want to bring their best. So, and again, all these mat these games are going to be played at. Uh, in in Orlando, Florida, they're not going to be. There's no home court advantage. There's no fans. None of that jazz. As for the Clippers, next game after the uh, Pelicans, they play the Phoenix Suns. Uh, the Phoenix Suns. I could see the Clippers just beating the Suns. The Suns. No offense to Suns fans and the Phoenix Suns. Devin Booker, all that. DeAndre Ayrton, but the Suns. They're they're still yearning for that golden opportunity. They had their chances back when they dominated the Eastern Conference when they had Steve Nash and Sean Marion and Amari Stoudemire and all that. But 
their their time has not come yet. So unfortunately to the Suns, their time isn't quite there yet. Soon though, soon, Ho- hopefully soon for for your sake. And after the Suns, the Lakers or not not the Lakers, the Clippers play the Mavericks on August sixth. Uh, the Mavericks are basically in uh, do or die mode. They definitely are also going to want to take their best shot against certain teams. So we'll see what the Mavericks have to offer. But I can see the Clippers winning that match as that g- game as well. I keep saying match when I should be saying game. I I need to get my mind out of volleyball and I need to get it into. <laughs> need to get into basketball. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Again, this doesn't help that I just came off of doing set point, but that's besides the point. The point is, uh, next match for ne- next game for the Clippers after the Mavericks. They play the Portland Trailblazers. Now, the Portland Trailblazers are a, definitely a team that wants to get into the playoffs, and they actually came to life. And they've they're kind of one of the more revitalized teams. So the Clippers. Uh, I can see them winning that one, but it's kind of going to be close. So after the Trailblazers, the Clippers play the Brooklyn Nets. That's the second of a back-to-back for them. The Nets, again, that's another team that's trying to make the playoffs. I think they'll have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving both back, uh, back at full strength. So that could be a loss for the Clippers, but... To me, I think the Clippers. I think the Clippers can win that one. Like, I'm not trying to say the Clippers will go undefeated, but you get, you gotta prepare for the worst. Like, the Clippers definitely have a pretty winnable schedule for them, but it all depends on if they can actually come up big. Like, can they come up big? And uh, Ben Sutter at the third says, "Go Mavs! They're not going fa- far either." So, uh, yeah, probably not. Like, I don't see them actually going to win the NBA championship. Like, if they actually win the NBA championship, then bully for them. But can they beat the Lakers? Can they beat the Clippers? And if they get past those two teams, can they beat the Bucks or the Raptors or the Celtics? Uh, unless Dirk Nowitzki in his prime comes back, so not really happening. Sorry, Ben, but we'll see. We'll see. And crazier things have happened before. So after the uh, the Brooklyn Nets, the Clippers follow up with on August twelfth against the Denver Nuggets. That's going to be a great game right there. That could decide the number two seed and which team could. Could possibly, and it could possibly decide the three and four seed. Like, we could see the Clippers as, let's say the Clippers get off to a slow start, and then they uh, they lose more games than they that they're supposed to, and then they have this big match against the or big game against the Nuggets, and then that somehow comes into play, and then they somehow finish fourth in the uh, Western Conference. Basically, it would be four versus five, and then they somehow win that first round matchup. Then they then the Lakers, which are the number one seed, assumingly, if everything goes well for them, they win their first round matchup, and then we could see the Lakers versus Clippers in the set in the uh, Western Conference semifinals. So, who knows? We we could it could happen. It could possibly happen. And and then the Clippers round off their uh, season on August fourteenth against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Again, the Thunder are an interesting team, and I definitely think the Thunder will are gonna probably want to bring their best shot against against uh, all these teams in 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 this whole little uh, playoff round robin because they want to make the postseason. That's for sure. They're, the only thing is, in order to make the postseason, you actually have to beat some of the better teams like the Lakers and the Clippers. Only then will you make the uh, postseason. So we'll we'll see. Like the Thunder have the Miami Heat on their schedule. They also have, like I said, they have the they have the Lakers. They they have the Suns, which they can win. They have the Wizards, which they they definitely should win against. They have the Grizzlies, who are also clawing their way, who also want to claw their way into the playoffs. They also have. The Denver Nuggets, that's a crucial game for them right there. 
We also they also have the Utah Jazz on August first. Another crucial game right there. So the Thunder definitely have some challenging games. Like it, they these are going to be this is basically dog eat dog right here. So no team is basically safe from one another. So I expect nothing more than an all out dog fight. And even the teams that are already locked up a spot in the playoffs, they're not even guaranteed to possibly be the number one seed. Like, I, I'm a little concerned for the Lakers. Like, I definitely think the Lakers can go far, and I definitely think they can win the NBA championship. But it's all about them putting it all together. Like, they did sign J.R. Smith as Avery Bradley decided to opt out. And I think J.R. Smith is definitely going to bring his best when it comes to the Lakers. Obviously, he wants to redeem himself after that blunderous blunder in that in that uh, game one against the uh, Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. And I, I feel for the guy. Like, I feel for the guy who hasn't had a job in, like, on a team in, like, forever. So, me personally, I think this is J.R. Smith's time to shine. I think this is kind of his redeem factor. And then Dwight Howard's another player I also got to talk about. Uh, I mean, I'm glad Dwight Howard's being productive with the Lakers after that little stint prior. And I hope he def. And that's again, that's another thing I hope he uh, gets. I I hope he wins a ring with the Lakers. That I like for the Lakers, they have a lot of reasons why why I think they'll definitely win. One because they obviously got to win it for Kobe who uh, sadly passed away along with his daughter and all that. Two, because a lot of these players on their team are like journeymen, like JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard, Rajon Rondo. And then also Kyle Kuzma wants to prove himself that he's not just a, an, an extra option. Like He wants to prove himself like he is a key player for the Lakers and that he's not just... He's not just there with LeBron and AD. Like he wants to prove himself as a, like a trifecta, and I think he can. Like I'm definitely like. He also wants to prove himself like why the Lakers did not trade him for Anthony Davis because obviously the Lakers gave up a lot for for AD, but it's gonna pay them dividends. And they also and also the Lakers have Dion Waiters who they haven't seen yet, so. We'll see. We'll see. And the Clippers also uh, signed Joe Kim Noah. I guess that's a good signing. I guess, but it's a eh signing. Like, can Joe Kim Noah actually get past LeBron in the playoffs? We'll see. But other than that, I'm definitely looking forward to the NBA returning. And I, I feel for the NBA uh, players that having to get their little room service uh their little room service foods. So it's just like, uh, it's like no five star gourmet chefs coming in and serving them good food. I guess it's for like, uh, in it's like for safety purposes, just so they don't get COVID, but eh, kind of, it's kind of, eh. So on that note, um, I definitely see the Lakers probably coming out of the West, but the Clippers are definitely a close favorite. I definitely think those two will be down to meet each other in the Western Conference Finals. If it's not those two in the Western, if it's not one of those two emerging out of the uh, Western Conference, then I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much my thing on NBA. Let's transition into baseball, which is coming back. So the MLB finally got a an agreement going on. They have their agreement, and we're going to get a 60-game season. And the Dodgers are hoping to uh, finally break out of their little losing funk after their October slump where they managed to find a way to just lose games in the postseason. The Angels, on the other hand, are the, to the are kind of the exact opposite. They're trying to get into the postseason, and for good reason as well. Like they had themselves a pretty so solid offseason, signing Anthony Rendon and doing well in the dra in the draft, getting pitchers. And but their main concern is: Will Mike Trout play? Like if Mike Trout decides to sit out, like, uh. This 
is like, can the Angels really bounce back from that? Like, if my like David Price is already sitting out for the for the Dodgers. Like, if Mike Trout sits out for the Angels, then that's kind of uh, that could be a bit of cause for alarm. And the thing you everyone has to know about is that. Is that uh, Mike Trout has a kid on the way? Like that is uh, that's the big thing right there. So uh, like, and he obviously doesn't want to contract the virus to his kid or his wife. So so hopefully, hopefully for Mike Trout's sake, he'll he'll make the correct decision. I'm sure he will. Like if if he decides to move on from. If he decides to opt out and not play for the Angels, then so be it. Then everyone else has to step up. I definitely think the Angels are not short of talent. However, I definitely don't know if they'll... I don't know if they can contend with everyone in their division. Like, the San Diego Padres... Like, that's another team in SoCal that I'll be talking about after the Angels and Dodgers. Like, the San Diego Padres have definitely improved. Like, the Angels will be seeing the Padres in preseason... Or train or an exhibition play, but you look at the teams that the Angels have to face. They're playing the Padres. That's an improved team. They're playing the Oakland A's. That's a definite good team. They're playing the Seattle Mariners. Not a the greatest team, but I think the Mariners can make noise. I don't know. Like I think that's probably their saving grace. Then they're also then the Angels are also playing the Houston Astros. Definitely a tough team. Then they're playing the Texas Rangers. They're also in their division. A not not the team I'd take to win the N- to the, win the MLB uh, a World Series, but eh, no, they're okay. They're not great, but they're not bad. They're kind of borderline. They're not good. Then, then you also have the Dodgers in that division. Dodgers are always a great playoff contender. San Francisco Giants, they've had a little bit of an off... Uh, they've been off the past few years, but but when they're on, they're on. So, so and then you also have the Arizona Arizona Diamondbacks, which they're, they're kind of on the rise as well. And... You also have the Colorado Rockies, which, ugh, no, I, I don't think the Colorado Rockies can do some damage. They're kind of the surprise team, however, especially if you play at Colorado because of altitude purposes. But to me, I don't think the Rockies pose much of a threat. So, But MLB, the MLB has given the Angels a much better chance at making the playoffs. Like, like I think their playoff chances were like, 15% last I checked. I want to say that playoff uh that playoff those playoff chances are like went up to like 30%. So looking at the Angels schedule, they have winnable games, but for the most part they just play a lot of difficult teams. Like their first games, their opening day game is against the Oakland the Oakland A's, which Obviously, that's a that's a definite definite good team right there. I could see, I could see that going either way. I'd want to hope the Angels can split between the A's. If they get three out of four, good, good for them. If they get one out of three, ugh. it all depends on who they have and what they've got going forward. Like I have gotten word that the Angels have been have had most of their players show up for training but it all de- but can they put it all together can they put a good p- pitching match all together like that seems to be the angels bit of uh, trouble throughout the years they're pitching and we don't even know if Shohei Otani is going to be pitching or if he's going to be hitting like i think personally he should be pitching with all of the uh, pitching woes that the angels have had but but to me, it, it's it's either or. It's uh, it, it's whatever. Like, like it's, like it's whatever for the Angels. Like, I don't know. Like, I think they can make the playoffs, but 
It all depends. I don't even know what the playoff format is, to be honest. I don't even think they've announced the playoff format. Like, my bit of playoff format is the top 10 teams get into the playoffs. And then the, or not, not top 10 teams, the, uh, the top three teams from each division. If they're not going to go with the AL and NL, top three teams from the East, top three teams from the West, top three teams from the Central, and then, and then the remaining the best team of the remaining teams that didn't finish in the top three of the Central, East, and West gets into the playoffs. And then the worst team that finished in the top three of the Central, East, and West has to face the the uh, wild card, the little wild card team. Or, or maybe just have like, the top ten teams in the playoffs. Or just maybe have top ten teams in the playoffs in general. Or... or and then maybe have like a seven versus ten seed, and then an eight versus nine seed, and then basically like wild cards. I still like the whole. Uh, I mean, it's kind of complicated having three divisions, but we'll see. I think we'll see how it goes. I mean, spring. Tr- I mean, uh, exhibition games don't start until July twentieth, and then opening day is on. July 24th. Definitely looking forward to that. And we'll see what the Angels have to offer. Now the Dodgers, again, they're in a different they're in a different boat. They want to get back into the postseason. I and here's and their uh op, their exhibition games are against the Cardinals and the Angels, which is cool. And then their opening day game, they're actually open on the 23rd instead of the 24th, which is when the Angels uh, open up. The Dodgers play the San Francisco Giants. Now, those two teams love – it's a great rivalry with those two teams, whether it's whether they're both in the NL or not. So we'll see how the Dodgers do. I think the Dodgers can at least – at the very least take three out of four against the Giants. If they sweep them, that's even better. If they take two out of – if they split between the Giants, then eh? Like, maybe the Giants are better than what they, that people have been giving them credit for, but we'll have to see. The The, the matchup that uh, the Dodgers definitely have circled on their calendar is July 28th and July 29th when they have to go over to Houston to play the Houston Astros. Dodgers fans have definitely been are waiting for that matchup. They're definitely waiting to play... For the Dodgers to play uh, the Astros, especially in September when the Astros have to come to uh, to uh, the Chavez Ravine, Dodgers Stadium. So that's gonna that's but that's all the way in September, like July, July twenty eighth and 29th. That's it's gonna be fun to see what where the uh, to see how the Dodgers will fare in uh, Houston. So. We'll 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 see. Like I definitely think the Dodgers have a a higher ceiling than the Angels. Like I think the the Dodgers, c- considering they have lots of good playoff experience, like they definitely have a good shot at winning the the West if they decide to to dump all the teams. I, it looks looking like it's going to be all the teams that are are going to be uh, divided by region instead of like. Divided but from NL and AL, it's basically going to be the the West, the Central, and the East. It's not going to be the AL West, the NL West, the AL Central, NL Central, AL East, NL East. So, I definitely do expect the Dodgers to make a big push for the playoffs. Now, I didn't forget about the San Diego Padres. The San Diego Padres have definitely improved. My que- my thing is. Are they worth the hype? Would you, for those listening, do you, for you baseball fans out there, do you buy the the Padres hype, or is it not, or is it are they just a bust? Are they a fluke? I think the Padres are good, but can they finally show it? Like, can they show it to one another? Can they show it to the entire world? Can they finally bring home that World Series championship to San Diego? Because San Diego has been long yearning for a championship in the city that got stabbed in the back by Dean Spanos, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. But to me, I think 
I think the Dodgers have a higher ceiling. Of the Padres, Angels, and Dodgers, I definitely think the Dodgers have a higher ceiling. The Angels and Padres, to me, are both boom or bust. Like, if they get go get the ball rolling, if they actually get hot starting out, I think they can – those two teams can actually do damage. But if they get on a losing streak, if they get in a little bit of a slump, just like the Angels did last year when they lost to the Orioles and the Lions – that, or not the Lions, the uh, Tigers. I'm getting MLB and NFL mixed up. Um, then I don't see the Angels going far. Like, the Angels on paper are good, but when it comes to, like, it seems like when they get on a hot streak, they always find a way to, find to like, uh, get on a cold streak, which is, which you have the best player in baseball on your team. And he might not even play this year, so the Angels could be back in the basement of the NF or in the MLB. God, I think that might be the best transition to go in the NFL once once I'm done. But I really want the Angels to be successful. I think it's about time we stop looking at the Angels as a punchline and look at them as a possible playoff contender. If the Washington Nationals can beat the Houston Astros in the World Series, then maybe, just maybe, the Angels can actually make the playoffs with Mike Trout and possibly have a deep playoff run. Or maybe the baseball gods will use them as their toilet of sadness. But wait, we'll off to see. So before we transition to the NFL, we're actually going to take ourselves a little bit of a break. When we get back, we'll be talking some NFL, some MLS, a little bit of NHL, and some WNBA, and we'll be talking a little bit of college sports, even though that's not been going on. So you're listening to the SoCal Supreme Sports Show here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, what's up, BS3 sports fans? If you love listening to the BS3 Sports Show, check out the Weekend Wrap-Up every Monday at 12.15 Central Time, 1.15 Eastern, recapping the weekend in sports like you never heard it before. Comedy, interactive chat room, it's a must-listen. Weekend Wrap-Up on Spreaker.com, part of the X-Squad. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Attention all sports fans If you're someone who wakes up each morning with a list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day Then you just might be a Zihard the world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the colleagues, and everything in between. This is me, your brother, Larry B. of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world, sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for The Defining Moment with me, your brother, Larry B. every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there. Show called Fast Break with Phil Jones here on the IE Sports Radio. 
and all we talk about is straight basketball. From where it comes down to the NBA, the NCAA, and even the WNBA. I don't discriminate. I give all my NBA, my basketball, whatever you want with sports, to the slam dunk, to the three-pointers, to the teardrops, to the game winners. I'm there. I'm speaking about it. I have a debate. I have my panel. I got a squad that rolls in. And we're going to be talking mad sports. We're going to be talking about the Lakers. We're going to be talking about even the Brooklyn Nets. We're going to be talking about who's the top team out there in the NBA. So, tie all the drama. Tie all the... What did he wear today? What kind of shoes he had? Get all that. Just come over. Fast break Phil Jones here on Ice Sports Radio every Wednesday night, 8 Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time, y'all. So, yo, tune in. And we are back. Yes, a lot of great shows on Ice Sports Radio going on. And Ice Sports Radio is growing. Like, our regional shows have been taken off, such as this one, Kansas City Shuffle, Seattle Boom Sports Podcast, that's going to be coming up. Chi Town Weekly's coming up. That's going to be a sh- our Chicago show. We have Down in H Town with uh, Corey Walker. And we're soon going to be getting a Boston sports show, possibly. So tune in for all those shows. And speaking of Fast Break, big shout out to Davidson Crooks, that's in the uh, chat room saying what's good. Hey, thanks for j- for tuning in, Davidson, or thanks for dropping by. So now let's jump into the NFL, where the Los Angeles Chargers and the LA Rams are both trying to get are both having an off season where they're trying to make the playoffs again. So the Chargers have had themselves quite a busy free agency. They got Brian Beluga from the Green Bay pa- Packers and. Davidson Crook says, no problem, sir. I appreciate you. Keep doing your thing, man. And I, I def- definitely check out uh, Fast Break every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern with Davidson Crooks and Dentarius Locke. And also got to give a big shout to Davidson Crooks, who actually got engaged, I think, a couple weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. I would, for, meant to acknowledge that on set point, but... Uh, that, that, I, that slipped through my mind. Uh, but, it, it, but, again... Congratulations to Davidson Crooks on tying the knot. So, so, and that, that's absolutely amazing, man. So, big ups to you. So, anyway, back to the free agency transactions for the LA Chargers. They got Brian Beluga from the Green Bay Packers. They got Chris Harris Jr. from the Denver Broncos. Uh, Davidson Crooks says he actually got married on June twentieth. Ugh, oh, that that was my bad. But I think that that was a. Uh, that was uh three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. So yeah, <laughs> my my bad, Davidson. But uh, still, congratulations to you, buddy. So so as for the Chargers, uh, they got Brian Beluga, Chris Harris, Darius Jennings, Linval Joseph. They got Trey Turner. They got and Nick Vigil. They got those players from free agency, and th- that's a pretty solid. Those are some pretty solid pickups, honestly. Like uh, Chris Harris Jr. definitely does wonder for the Chargers' defense in terms of cornerbacks. Like he definitely had some. He definitely had his moments with the Broncos. Brian Beluga is a great tackle. Trey Turner is a great guard. He they I think they they actually uh got yeah they traded him uh to the Panthers for Russell Okun, who is from Wakanda Tech. So. Yeah, so Linval Joseph signed, and uh, Darius Jennings uh, signed with the Bolts, and uh, and Nick Vigil agreed to terms. I think Nick Vigil is actually on the Chargers prior. And in addition to bringing those players, to bringing in those players, Chargers that will be returning are Austin Eckler, who is bound to have a great season at running back. They have Michael Davis at cornerback. They have Hunter Henry, who got franchise tag, who who is definitely. A great, one of the great tight ends in the NFL. Definitely trying to be in to- definitely trying to be an Antonio Gates uh, Jr. and he's doing a great job of it. They have Isaac Rochelle who 
will be returning, and they have Trent Scott, who uh, who uh, I guess had a tendered offer. And uh, pending free agents, the first one is Sylvester Williams, Jalen Watkins, Damian Square. I think he plans to come back though, and. And D- Davidson Crook says Darius Jennings will be solid special teams for the Chargers. I agree, Davidson. Definitely agree. Damian Square, Michael Schofield, the third, Lance Kendricks, Ryan Groy, Spencer Drango, Sean Culkin, Jatavis Brown, and the last pending free agent is Travis Benjamin. Ugh. Like, if there's one player I hope the Chargers don't bring back, it's that guy. I d- <laughs> it's nothing against Travis Benjamin, but for those of you that remember back in, I think it was 2017 when the Chargers, or was it 18? I think it was 18, when the Chargers played the New England Patriots and Travis Benjamin was back uh, receiving a uh, punt from the Patriots, the dude decided to run backward into the end zone and he got tackled for a safety. And it's like, really? It's like, and ever since that play, I don't want to see Travis Benjamin on the field. Unless they have to. Unless they have to put Travis Benjamin. Like, like, come on, come on, man. Like, you, you can't be doing that. Like, if Travis Benjamin, if I ever, I, if I ever see him on the field again, then, the, then I, I will be just disappointed. So the Chargers did lose some some solid key pieces, one of which was Philip Rivers, which obviously was a big loss. But they drafted, but they drafted uh, their quarterback uh, from Oregon, being uh, ah, ah I'm blank. I'm actually blanking on his. Uh, but they did draft a quarterback, and they still have Tyrod Taylor. I can't believe I'm blanking on the quarterback's name. I I, I should know this uh, quarterback, but uh, but uh, I definitely think the Chargers are still fine in terms of uh, of uh, possible quarterbacks. Justin Herbert. How did I forget his name? Like Justin Herbert. Uh, they drafted the the uh, Chargers drafted Justin Herbert. Yeah, 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 thanks, Davidson. Like, I, 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 I can't believe I forgot who the Chargers already drafted already. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, Justin Herbert is. They the Chargers drafted Justin Herbert, and they still have uh, Ty, Tyrod Taylor, not Tyrod, and they still have Easton Stick, who uh, I believe came from North Dakota State. So honestly. I think the Chargers, in terms of quarterbacks, are still okay, but uh, some some of their free agent departures are Dylan Cantrell, Jeremy Davis, Nick 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 uh, Zubar Zubnar Dun I, I can't pronounce his last name Melvin Gordon, Adrian Phillips, Tremaine Pope, and obviously Philip Philip Rivers and Derek Watt. Uh, Derek Watt went to be with his. Uh, is a middle brother in uh, Pittsburgh. Melvin Gordon getting signing with the Denver Broncos is kind of iffy, iffy on his part because he has to contend with Philip Lindsay and uh, and uh, I'm for, I'm blanking on the the other running back, but he still is going to have to split time with uh with a uh, what you call it uh. With with uh, Philip Lindsay, so we'll see we'll see how far uh, our bo- we'll see how far Melvin Gordon can go. Like if he can go, if he can actually make do with the uh, with in uh, in with Denver, then then cool. But if not, then uh, then I, I don't know. I I kind of question that. Like he's gonna be a second fiddle to. Uh, He's going to be second fiddle behind uh, Philip Lindsay, but if anything, may who knows? Maybe Royce Freeman—that's his name. So yeah, he's definitely going to have to play a third. He's definitely going to need to like earn his time behind uh, Philip Lindsay. Like if he had gone to like a team that needed a running back, like maybe say Tampa Bay, 
I think that would have been crazy scary. But I think Tampa Bay might have broken the bank in terms of signing Tom Brady. So, well, we'll see. Like, if if Melvin Gordon can can find a good home with the Broncos, then cool. Like, but I but I personally will miss Philip Rivers. Like, I kind of have bashed him a lot. But if. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I'm glad uh, Philip Rivers is going to be going to a team that actually has a fan base and that has an offensive line, being being the being the Indianapolis Colts, and and it's not that I don't want, like it's not that I hate hate the fact that he left, but I think it's time that he has a different change of scenery, and I think this is his last year. I think this is Rivers's last year as a player in the NFL. I think next year he's going to coach in the in a high, at a at, at <clears throat> in a high school in Alabama. He's going to be coaching football in a high school at Alabama. So we'll see. We'll we'll see how we'll see how it it goes. We'll see how it goes to be honest. I think uh they definitely I think the Colts can definitely do some damage in the AFC South. As for the Chargers, I kind of actually, even though I'm a Chargers fan, I'll try not to be too much of a homer, but I think the Chargers can actually do well in the AFC West. I know the Raiders have gotten better, the Broncos have also improved, and the Chiefs still have uh, Patrick Mahomes for a little while longer. Hint, hint, 12 more years. But I think the Chargers, the Chargers to me are a frisky team. Like they're the, they're the type of team that doesn't that people expect them to not do well, but then somehow out of the blue they start ripping off wins left and right. Which <clears throat> it's kind of a surprise. It's 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 funny because they're a frisky team, and sometimes they just manage to do the exact opposite of what they do. Like every time people expect greatness out of them, like. Everyone last year was thinking, "Oh, this team might be a potential Super Bowl candidate." They wind up going five and eleven. They fail to even win one game in the in the AFC West. And then I think most te- I think most critics uh, didn't even give the Chargers a chance back in two thousand and in nineteen in the two thousand eighteen nineteen season and then they managed to pull off some pretty solid wins, one of which was against the Chiefs. And I think to this day, uh the Chargers are the only team in the AFC West to have <clears throat> to have beaten the the to have beaten Patrick Mahomes. But that could change. That could change. I think the AFC West is Debatably the strongest division in the NFL. As for the Rams, the Rams have had somewhat of an interesting offseason. They've they've had a bunch of uh, players that have come and gone. They had Brandon Cooks traded to the uh, Houston Texans. They had uh, Greg Zuerlein go to the to the Dallas Cowboys. And they they released Todd Gurley and Clay Matthews. So as for the Rams, I don't know. It's like they're in a very tough predicament in the in, in the NFC South or not NFC South, NFC West. Gosh. So yeah, in the NFC West, uh, they play in a loaded division with the San Francisco Forty ers the Seattle Seahawks, both of which are. Well, the 49ers have just now got back into the playoffs, and the Seattle Seahawks have always been perennially good. And then you also have the Arizona Cardinals, which just got a lot better with uh, DeAndre Hopkins, and they returned Kyler Murray and Kenyon, Kenyon Drake, and they got better, I think, in more ways than one. I think they got better on the offensive line. So as for the Rams, which didn't even have a first-round pick... I think it's kind of going to be a struggle for them. I think they're going to struggle a little bit this upcoming year. I mean, they still have Jared Goff, which is some, which I don't know if he's the greatest quarterback. I'd take to war with him to uh, with me to possibly win the Super Bowl 
But he's a solid quarterback. He's solid. I don't think he's nowhere near great. Like, I don't think he's a top five quarterback. But he's a solid quarterback. He's nowhere near great, but he's nowhere near bad. So, And then I think the, and the, the Rams obviously still have Aaron Donald, which was recently named the, I think it was the player of the decade or, of, or something like that, which... Is a very impressive feat, honestly. So, so good, good on the, uh, so good on Aaron Donald, uh, honestly. So, we'll see how far the Chargers uh, or Chargers and the Rams go. Like uh, the, yeah, he is the Rams player of the decade. Uh, the Rams player of the decade, not the player of the decade. I definitely think uh, Aaron Donald has definitely made a name for himself, and I think he'll definitely continue to make a name for himself. With the Rams for, for uh, as time goes by, like he's definitely done great things for the Rams defense, and I think going forward, he'll he'll continue to uh, do great things for the Rams defense, at, so long as the Rams decide to keep him, and so long as he wants to stay on the Rams. Like I don't know if there'll ever be a scenario where Aaron Donald will want to go to another team. Like if that ever happens, then boy howdy, the Rams did. Sure, screw up. So overall, everyone expects the Chargers to have such a flimsy season. I mean, I don't really see the Chargers being Super Bowl contenders myself, even though I'm a Chargers fan. But I will say this: I think they'll be better than like three and thirteen. Some people have them going three and thirteen. I think they're at worst they'll probably be six and ten. At best, they'll probably be ten and six, if not eleven and five. Many people think many people think I'm being might be thinking I'm being a little too generous, but I think that could that could be where the Chargers end up. It's they're basically a boomer bust team. I think they're boomer bust as well. Like I think they can. I think they have the potential. It's just about them actually finishing games. Like, Anthony Lynn's a great coach, and he's done a great job. This past year, they were just hindered by injuries and all that. So, it's basically... I don't know if uh, if the if the Chargers actually don't do well, Anthony Lynn gets the hook. I think Anthony Lynn's job is in good security, but... Uh, but we'll have to see. Sean McVay, I think, is is going to be staying for a long time for the Rams unless Stan Kroenke and everyone else wants him out, which I think that wouldn't be too wise on the Rams' part. So, But that's going to pretty much do it for the NFL portion of the of this show. Now let's jump into the hockey, the NHL portion of the show, being the Kings and the Ducks. Those two won't be going to the playoffs. That's it. What you thought that was going to be all? I, I no, nah, no. Nah. Um, Kings and Ducks are not going to the playoffs. Both of those teams were pretty bad. Like they were both, they're both so close to to each other in terms of in terms of record. So honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Like in order for them to possibly get better, they're definitely gonna. They're definitely both on the rebuild. Like. I think the the Kings are just too old, while the Ducks are pretty much just trying to figure out everything. Like, the Ducks, I definitely want the Ducks to... The Ducks are long due for a playoff playoff uh, berth, and they're long due for a Stanley Cup. The Kings, on the other hand, they're trying to get back to the promised land, which is the playoffs. But uh, I just think they're, they, they're a little old, and they kind of need to be... A little bit more young. They kind of need to get a little bit more younger, but who knows? I mean, the the two teams were practically identical in records. Heck, even the San Jose Sharks were weren't too far were had the same record as the Kings. So every California team won't be going to the postseason. But the Kings did get a nice little consolation prize, getting the second pick in the NHL draft, which is really awesome. I'm really glad that they that they'll be poss- that they'll have a chance to pretty much improve their roster. If they can do if they can improve their roster anyway, then then cool. Like like I I just think that uh 
both those teams have higher ceilings, but especially with top 10 picks, I just think that the Ducks might have a little bit more of a higher ceiling. Not just because I'm mainly more pro Ducks fan, but mainly because because of their offensive talent, such as Jakob Silverberg and and Corey Perry. So we'll see how it goes with those two teams. It's definitely going to be a long off season for them, but at least they're not the Sharks, right? <laughs> okay, I'm kidding, Sharks fans. I'm sorry. But that's kind of pretty much going to do it for the NHL portion. I'll try to revisit that a little bit later. Again, I definitely do. We'll, we'll talk more NHL as this show progress, progresses. As This is only episode one of uh, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. And I am still trying to get used to this whole thing. And it, it's kind of... And uh, it's kind of t- tough to talk about the Ducks and the Kings when they, there's no postseason. They're not going to be playing for anything. I wish every team in the NHL had gotten gone to the playoffs because maybe maybe had like a little bit of an NCAA tournament factor. But honestly, I don't think it would have worked out for both those teams. So it's a big fat nope for me. So. Until next year, Ducks and Kings. Hopefully we'll see in the postseason. But, again, I think their future looks bright. I think their future looks bright. Like, the Ducks actually had a solid start to their season, and then, unfortunately, the wheels fell off, and they just lost a bunch of a bunch of overtime games, which is disappointing, to say the least. So, we'll see. We'll see. But that's going to pretty much wrap it up for that for the NHL portion of the show. Now let's talk about the MLS, the soccer portion of the sco- sh- soccer portion of the show, being the LA Galaxy and LAFC. So the Galaxy and LAFC are definitely two teams to watch for. I think both, and I and and, uh, and with those two teams having a, will be facing each other in like a. There's gonna be like a little bit of some fancy schmancy tournament. I think it's called the Welcome Back Tournament. And they're they're gonna be playing they're in the same pool with one another, so So it's definitely gonna be one to remember. Like I wanna say the the Galaxy are the Galaxy and LEFC are definitely in the are definitely in the same pool. Uh, but honestly, uh, can't, I don't know if those two teams can actually go far. Like, if they do, then cool. If not, then so be it. Like, I, I, I still can't wait for their MLS's back tournament. Like, like it's definitely a different change of pace. Like, it, yeah. Here's here's the group. Uh, here's the group. Uh, the LA Galaxy is in Group F, and they will play the Portland Timbers. At the, on July 13th, LAFC on July 18th, and the Houston Dynamo on July 23rd. So it's going to be really cool to see. Like, I definitely want to see, th- again, it will be really fun to see LAFC and the LA Galaxy duke it out in El Trafico. Who knows, maybe we'll have ourselves a live calling of El Trafico. Like, I, like when it comes to El Trafi- Trafico... Just throw out the records and just prepare for the worst. And I I definitely think the... Like, it's too early to tell, but I think the Galaxy and LAFC are kind of right with one another. Like, LAFC did knock them out of the playoffs last year. But, but I think going forward, I think the Galaxy have a little bit of a bigger ceiling. Not the biggest soccer expert, but I definitely think... The Galaxy can, with Zlatan, can definitely keep it going. We'll see, though. Like, we'll see. Like, LAFC is just as talented as LA Galaxy. So, if they... If we uh, see... If we see those teams... Uh, it, it, when, we, when we see those two teams facing one another, I definitely expect fireworks. And I think David Bingham can definitely still has it in him despite him being uh, 30 years old we'll see though 
We'll see. And I, I like how they also added Eric Lopez. He's from Westminster, California, which is which is cool. And then they also have Justin Vom Stieg, who is from Santa Barbara, so it's pretty cool as well. Which is uh, also cool as well. So really, really cool. So I I, I guess the galaxy don't have Zlatan, which is quite the bummer, honestly. But Zlatan had a great run. Like Zlatan was one of the reasons why I I was uh it, very interested in uh, the galaxy this past year. Not just because of Larry B and uh, Gabriel Montoya. But uh, basically, the Gal uh, Zlatan was. Uh, I watched the Galaxy and I saw his talent, and I'm like, "Whoa, this dude is this cat is is balling out." So sucks that we don't get to see Zlatan anymore. But he had a great he had a great run. So so yeah. As for LAFC, I I was disappointed in last in their run last year. Last year they lost. To the, they beat the Galaxy in the playoffs. But then they wound up losing in the I think they lost in the conference semifinals or the com or the conference finals, which was definitely a disappointment. I think I think uh they being the number one seed and then wa- wa- fa- finding a way to lose in the in that stage of this in the playoffs is very disappointing for them. And I think they're they're gonna want to come back with a little bit of revenge. At the same time, however, can they? Like it's one thing to lose. It's one thing to lose, but I think, but to lose as the number one seed is a little ugh. like what are you doing, LAFC? But it's it's whatever. So again, I'll, I'll once this as the show progresses, I'll definitely uh, have more info on the MLS. Like the MLS is not is not back yet, but it will be back pretty soon. And I'll, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. So now let's jump on into the WNBA portion of the show where the LA sparks will be kicking off their season pretty soon. Um, I do really want to say, I am not impressed with how the WNBA has gotten treated. Like that's pretty disappointing. Like, like that's, that's bad, man. That's really bad on what's, what the WNBA players as a whole are are having to go through with in terms of like filth and also their uh, mouse traps everywhere and everything all over the place. That's like, come on and come on WNBA, do better. And obviously, Candace uh, Parker voiced her opinion about something the Atlanta Dream uh, owner uh, had to say, but I'm not gonna get too much into that. Because that's that, that's something I don't want to get into on the opening uh, show, but it, it it is what it is. So so we'll we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Like as for the Sparks, obviously they want to have a better. Uh, they obviously want to have a better. Uh, better season than last year. They obviously had a great season last year. They got all the way to, I think, the conference finals, if I'm not mistaken. And then they got swept. And I kind of felt foolish for saying, Sparks in five, after they were down 2 nothing in in their conference final series. <laughs> but uh, that, that's just me being a, a little bit of a homer. So we still don't know... Uh, when what the sparks of schedule will be looking like but as their schedule uh as the as the days uh, progress i definitely want to see them uh getting their schedule i think the sparks have what it takes to to actually compete with some of these other teams they did lose certain some players i think they lost uh i i'm going to butcher her name so they lost one talented player but I, I I think it was On Onuke or something something Onuke. But either way, they lost Onuke, and then obviously it wasn't uh, easy for them. But I think that with Candace Parker and a few others, I think they still have Chelsea Gray. I think the Sparks still have what it takes to contend with uh, 
uh, with the other talent in the WNBA. Like, I don't think they're the best team in the Western Conference, but I sure as heck don't think they're the worst team in the Western Conference. So, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, and uh, they will be playing in Orlando, but and but I just want them to actually have better treatment. Like, I think, and and this is kind of also this could also ruffle some feathers, but I think women in sports deserve a whole lot better than deserve a whole lot better honestly like i think they deserve so much better like they don't deserve like mouse traps and rodents and filth and all that they deserve uh, better and they deserve proper pay just like the men do so that's just my little spiel about everything so we'll see so normally i'd be getting into the college portion of this show but there's no college sports going on not, not at the moment. Like, we don't even know if there's going to be college football. But I will be talking about college teams like USC, UCLA, Pepperdine, L- LMU, University of San Diego, San Diego State, Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long Beach, Cal State Northridge, Cal State Bakersfield. Well, there's actually this type of news. I, a couple weeks ago, a week or so ago, uh, Cal State Bakersfield and UC San Diego both have transitioned into the Big West Conference. So that's kind of big right there. The Big West Conference got bigger, and there are now more teams in that conference, which which is cool. Like, it's great to see UC San... Great to see San Diego and Bakersfield in the mix. Uh, another UC school and another Cal State school. The Roadrunners and the Tritons. That's a great combination. It's a great combination right there. And I think they'll be... Uh, those two will be a great uh, addition for the, the for the conference going forward, and I, I definitely am looking forward to seeing UC San Diego. Like UC San Diego has already been in the Big West Conference in terms of like volleyball. Like in terms of volleyball, if you've heard me talking about UC San Diego's men's volleyball team on Set Point, they had themselves a successful season last year, beating UC Irvine. That's another school I'm going to be talking about in terms of uh, this. In terms of this show, like I hope, hopefully it's not going to be a three-hour show. But if it does, then I'll try to shorten, like maybe the NBA or or the MLB or anything along the lines. I'll definitely try to shorten everything. So we'll see how it goes. So so there's that. But but we'll we'll, we'll but uh, time will tell, and hopefully we do get college sports. Yeah, it was July first, uh, so it was one week ago. That uh, Cal State Bakersfield, that Cal State Bakersfield and UC San Diego both officially joined the Big West Conference, so it's good for for the both of them, and hopefully uh, we'll get to see both those schools uh, do some big things. And yes, I and like I said, I will be talking about most uh, college uh, sports in Southern California. I'll probably just be doing like quick hits, just so this thing, the show, isn't like a two-hour show. But I do have some some like wiggle room in terms of uh, time, so uh, we'll see. Like I'm still trying to get used to this whole uh, this whole first show thing. Like once I get like more shows under my belt, this is bas- this basically will be coming second nature to me. So I, it also doesn't help that I'm coming like uh, one out ou- one hour off of uh, 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 less than twenty minutes from. Uh, me uh coming me coming 20 minutes after doing another podcast and doing all sorts of other stuff and trying to get the show prepared so it's a little tough but you know you got to do the you got to do what you got to do you got to improvise you got to work on the fly that's how it works in the podcast world that's how it works in the world in general but other than that i think that's going to do it for the pilot episode of the Supreme, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, and I'm still trying to get used to saying that name. Like it's four S's. The SoCal Supreme Sports Show. Like that sounds supreme as it is. It's more supreme than a supreme pizza. Hence being named the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. But other than that, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. It was a great productive episode. Big shout out to everyone in the chat room. Big shout out to Courtney Harden, Davidson Crooks, Matt Hames, and Ben Sutter at the third.
for tuning in. I definitely appreciate y'all tuning in, and hopefully y'all be... Oh, and Pierre Moss, uh, saying repping the repping the OC. Yeah, sorry about, uh, yeah, forgot about Pierre for a little bit, but big shout out to all everyone that tuned in. If you're listening to this on the replay or you're listening to this on any sort of platform, thank you for tuning in to this episode. Definitely do continue to support IE Sports Radio as we're still we're we're growing, man. We're on our way. Like we're definitely. We're definitely uh, gonna. We're definitely trying to be big time. We got a whole lot, a lot of regional shows. We also have IE Sports Radio merchandise that's on sale. We have tank tops. We have sweatshirts. We have long sleeve shirts. Heck, soon we might have sweatpants that are on sale, and soon we could have possible like show T-shirts. I, I, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. Like, we're, we're obviously not gonna have. We're not obviously not going to be that big time, but we're definitely uh, going to definitely going to be big time in terms of like in terms of like uh, everything as a show because we definitely want to be like big, like big time, like like at least be a household name, and we're trying to get there. Like this show's trying to get there, and hopefully next and next week, I promise you all. I won't be coming off of a back-to-back podcast because Setpoint will be going back to its regular time on Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And SoCal Supreme Sports Show will be back next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. Continue to support iSports Radio. Give us a like on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and on Instagram at iSports Radio. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on other platforms such as TuneIn, Spreaker, all that. And without any further delay, it's time to play that music because I gotta get me some dinner. You feel me? So thank you all once again for tuning in to the Supreme, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. My name is Taryn Rodriguez. Have yourselves a great rest of the day, great rest of the week, and hopefully I'll be seeing you all next Wednesday. Peace and blessings. And remember, SoCal is for SoCal.